Senator Rand Paul just released his new report for the year 2022 detailing the hidden tax inflation's effect on American families and small businesses. You can see Rand Paul pictured here is a ranking member of the U.S. Senate Committee on Small Business and Entrepreneurship, and he just published this 16-page report on inflation, calling it the hidden tax, saying that this has really problematic effects on small businesses and American families throughout the entire country. And so today we're gonna to go through this at length. Rand Paul, obviously somebody who's been at the forefront on a lot of issues here in America. Inflation is one of them. He's pulling these numbers from the Bureau of Labor Statistics. You can see BLS and CPI are both gonna be two acronyms we see a lot of here, the Consumer Price Index, numbers that we've been following a lot here in America for quite some time, given the fact that the country has printed trillions of dollars to deal with that pandemic. He says that they released numbers on January 12, 2021. They found that prices had risen 7% in the 12 months prior. He says this represents the largest increase in a 12 year period in the last four decades. Similarly, PPI, the producer price index, also increased on January 13, 21, found that businesses went up 9.7% themselves, the largest calendar year increase in prices in the history of this index. He refers to Milton Friedman, Nobel laureate, says that in a speech he said that the period of rising prices in the 1980s, inflation can be thought of as a hidden tax for rampant government action, something that impacts all of us. And you're seeing it at the grocery stores. See what a gallon of milk costs? Though the U.S. government has not levied taxes to pay for the $4.9 trillion spent on COVID, American public must still pay a hidden tax. In an attempt to understand how this tax was levied and how it affects American workers, let's talk about three things. Number one, Rand Paul says, COVID-19 stimulus is responsible for the rising prices. Goes back to a study, October 2021 from the Federal Reserve says, study concluded that the $1.9 trillion package, representing just a fraction of the total funds spent on COVID, pushed prices at least 0.3 percentage points higher. Federal Reserve also said in December 2021, that they will end their period of COVID stimulus and focus on fighting inflation, recognizing this is a problem. Remember how long we heard that this was all transitory? Oh, we're keeping an eye on it, but it's gonna be transitory. These are just supply chain problems. Don't you worry about it. You just go home, keep shopping, play with the kids, let the adults in charge at the Fed handle this. Now we can see the inflation burden is rising and a significant portion of the burden is being placed on the, po the, lower, the lower income individuals, the poor. 71% of households making under 40,000 annually have indicated economic hardships from rising prices, as opposed to just 29% of the households making $100,000 or more. That's right, because if costs increase 10%, the people who have big margins with a lot of money are not impacted by that. But the people who are living paycheck to paycheck with very limited budgets are over budget when those prices increase. So it doesn't impact the, wealth, the wealthy. The people making these policy decisions are immune. Rand Paul continues. He says low and middle income families spend a larger portion of their income on high inflation items like gas, used cars, and food. Just the nature of the, the services and the products that they use puts them in that category. Families in the lowest quartile spend nearly 40% of their income in these three categories. It's the essentials. They've got to get around and they've got to eat. As a means of comparison, well, whereas, whereas the more wealthy people, they've got much bigger budgets, and so the portion that is spent on those items is a much smaller piece of the pie because they're spending their money on fancy new cars and big new houses and going on fancy vacations. That's not in this equation. He says, as a means of comparison, families in the top quartile only spend about 10% of their income in these categories. So inflation impacts them significantly less. It says the cost of an average tank of gas rose from 2532 in December 2020 to 3840 in December 2021. Used car that was 10,000 in December 2020, now 13,000 December 21. Grocery cart 100 December 20, now 106 December 21. While these prices increase while they may seem trivial to wealthy families, the disproportionately burdens low and middle income families that spend a much larger proportion of their income on these items. And you can see how this breaks down just in the graph over a number of different categories. Gasoline increased 49.6%. 
followed by fuel, used cars and trucks, piped gas. Then we get new vehicles, tobacco, electricity, food, apparel, transportation, alcohol down, and so on. Medical care commodity is about the only thing that really hasn't seen any significant changes. Inflation disproportionately also harms small businesses. So in addition to the families that are getting squeezed by spending 40% of their budget on high inflationary prone items, also small businesses that feed many of these families are getting hit as well. 82% of small businesses reported raising prices in the last several months. And these, these metrics are coming from business.org. Okay, counting effects on inflation. That's from their numbers. 42% reported raising prices by 20% or more. And you don't need a survey to see this. You can just look around. 45% of small businesses reported taking out a loan to cope with the pressures of inflation from last year. That's from Fortune. Axios reports large corporations have reported consistent profit margins. Report concludes that no formal tax has been levied to pay for the government's recent spending trends. A hidden regressive tax has been led, levied on the American public, charging more from low and middle income families and small businesses and less from wealthy families and big businesses who can absorb those costs, whereas the small families and the small businesses can't. Milton Friedman, we heard referenced earlier, the Nobel laureate, he's an economist, once said, quote, before every election, our representatives would like to make us think we are getting a tax break. And they're able to do it while at the same time actually raising our taxes because of a bit of magic they have in their kit bags. That magic is inflation. They reduce the tax rates, but the taxes we have to pay go up because we are automatically shoved into higher brackets by the effect of inflation. A neat trick calls it taxation without representation. Absolutely true. Says, while elected officials did not promise tax breaks, they did spend $4.9 trillion in COVID stimulus since the beginning of the pandemic. Almost five. Programs included popular programs geared towards families, workers, business owners alike, like the Paycheck Protection Program, the Economic Impact Payments, Stimulus Checks, the Enhanced Unemployment Insurance. Though Congress passed these popular programs without raising taxes, Americans are now faced with a hidden tax that is a risk without any form of government spending. That is a risk with any form of government spending, inflation. What's the current state of inflation, Rand Paul tells us? He says, you know, just a day prior to the release of these BLS numbers, these labor statistics, statistics indicate the levels of inflation that the nation is facing is rising. President Biden stated in a press conference that the inflation findings the following day would, quote, not reflect today's reality. While this phrase was intended to explain away what has become the largest price increase in four decades, which is a 7% rise and 9.7% in producer prices, this statement holds. A simple statistic does not reflect the reality of the struggle that small business owners, workers, and consumers have faced over the last year. While Congress was able to unite in 2020 to spend $4.9 trillion, unity does not always lead to virtuous outcomes. And this particular example of unity left Americans with the most difficult economic conditions in recent history. BLS released the numbers on January 12, 2021. The release showed prices up 7% for the 12 months preceding. This marks the largest increase since 1982. Here's what that looks like. You can see you can chart that over the last several decades. And here we are, right on par with what we see back in 1982. Yeah. Uh, wasn't even around back there, but heard it was not ideal. He writes, these prices were driven largely by energy prices and food prices. 2021, energy prices went up 29.3%. Gasoline by itself, almost 50%. We talked about some of these price increases, 25 a gallon, now up, up to 38 a gallon. And the trend is even more shocking, considering that Americans actually drove less in 2020 than in 21 than in previous years because of the pandemic. So it's not because there is an undersupply. There's plenty of gasoline. Americans aren't even using as much. Aside from the jump in energy prices, the vehicle prices and food have also been key contributors, leading to rising 37.3% and 6.3% respectively. Vehicles up almost 40%, food up 6%. Here is that again in chart mode. You can see 25 in 2020 up to $38 a tank in 2021. And that is not insignificant, right? That is a, that is a big change. 
another chart, you can see inflation again, a percent change from years ago. We looked at something like that. In addition to the jumps, PPI increased as well. This is the pr producer price index. So you can see unprecedented jumps, energy, food, and transportation, more BLS numbers. You can see 86% of small business owners are concerned about inflation. And the PPI final demand is up, changed from a year ago, dramatically. Very, very red, very high. 84% seen an increase in operating costs, small businesses. 81% indicate that inflationary press pressures are still increasing and that inflation has negatively impacted their business. Five concerns for small business owners, inflation, consumer spending, general operating expenses, supply chain disruptions, and taxes. A lot of those are true. Most of those are governed by the government, which as we have seen largely has been incompetent. Rand Paul tells us about some of the various causes of inflation, saying various groups and pundits have tried labeling these increases as transitory or temporary, as we talked about. Policymakers indicated in December they're going to start combating these prices, making an end, marking an end to the, uh, the end of their pandemic stimulus efforts. Interest rates, which are currently set near zero to really encourage employment, are expected to rise three to four times throughout the course of the year to stop this inflation. In addition to signaling rising rates, Fed policymakers put an abrupt end to the bond buying program, which the Federal Reserve has been using to shovel money into the economy to encourage spending. This program will come to a complete halt by March of 2022. So the money printers going burr are going to go silent. These actions signaled by the Federal Reserve's December meeting seem to suggest the skepticism of the transitory nature of the pricing. Obviously. October 2021, Fed Reserve found that the Biden plan of $1.9 trillion had a statistically significant relationship to rising core inflation. That's what happens when you print $4.9 trillion. They found that all of this started to increase the inflation, the rest of the $4.9 trillion as well. Larry Summers expressed concern about this, says, quote, there is a chance that macroeconomic stimulus on a scale closer to World War II levels than in normal recession levels will set off inflationary pressures of a kind we have not seen in a generation. He posted that on the Washington Post op-ed February 4th, 2021. November, his prediction rang true. America reached the highest levels of inflation since 1982. You can see here how that looks. And you can see here how they talk about its inequitable effects, saying this makes sense that different sectors are going to be impacted differently. It's going to really hit the Midwest and the South harder than the East and the West. It makes sense. Midwest and the South have lower overall prices, meaning a change in the same magnitude goes up more dramatically. Also, high burden on low and middle income families. You can see how this looks, right? We talked about some of those charts. Percent of income spent on high inflation items. Food, used cars and trucks, and gasoline. The highest 20% spend a very small portion of their total income on those items. 7% on food, 2.3% on used cars and trucks, and 1.2% of their total income on gasoline. Because if you're making a million dollars a year, you don't need to spend the same portion of that income on these goods and services because you get enough food. And the rest of it's just gravy. Here, though, the lowest 20% because they're not making as much money, almost all of it goes to food, or at least you know a quarter of it, over a quarter of it goes to food. The rest goes to transportation so they can work, to go buy the food. Hit small businesses. We've seen a lot of this. Many small businesses, rising prices, raising prices. Larger businesses have the economies of scale necessary to adapt to these changing conditions. And they've got inexpensive capital to help them weather the storm. Small businesses, though, they have thin margins and they're financed with personal assets of its owner. So when you inflate the prices, when you inflate the entire economy, the small businesses that can't weather the storm get hit hard. Conclusion, Rand Paul says, we have to recognize this for what it is. $4.9 trillion in stimulus spending has led to one of the highest and sustained levels of inflation in U.S. history. Though government stimulus spending was intended as a form of relief, and low- and middle-income families as well as small business owners were promised that their taxes would not increase as a result of these packages, Americans are now paying a hidden tax. 
This price of the measures is high to all, but to low and income households and to small business owners, it's much more. Further spending in this time of rapidly rising prices is to impose an even higher tax on this nation's already vulnerable small business owners and low and middle income families. In the worlds of Milton Freeman, there is no such thing as a free lunch. But doesn't it feel like most people want a free lunch? Everybody just keeps passing bills and spending money and not really thinking about the consequences for the future generations. How many people are screaming about inflation on the side of the Republicans or the Democrats? A lot of people in the financial sectors are, but as long as that money keeps being printed and as long as wherever that money is going keeps those people happy and as long as those people stay happy and support the people in power, I think the system just keeps going on indefinitely and you and I are stuck with the bill. What do you think about Rand Paul's inflation report? Do you think that our government is a little bit out of control? Let me know what you think about it down in the comments below. Would love it if you subscribed before you got out of here. We have a live show that we do every weekday. Would love it if you joined us. So make sure you hit that subscribe button because I look forward to seeing you on the next one.